How can you not love Chasey Lane? Especially in the 1990s. I mean, what is there not to love? She's one of the most exotic looking porn stars of all time. And while she may not have reached the monolithic stardom of somebody like Jenna Jameson, this was still the time of actual porn stars. Oh, 96. It's one of those times that I kind of miss and I kind of don't. But, you know, some interesting things happened that year. The Olympics in Atlanta. Clinton versus Dole. Scream came out. There were some treasures from that lost time. I don't know that Chasey Saves the World is necessarily a treasure per se, but uh, it is if you're a Chasey Lane fan. If you're after something the caliber of those classics from the 70s and 80s with strong performances, a well-constructed narrative, and a torrential carnal intensity, well, this one falls well short of that. But then it's got Chasey Lane, so that's worth a 90 minute runtime, even if nothing else is. That does seem to be the attitude Vivid Video produced this sucker with at any rate. For starters, let's take a look at the title. Chasey Saves the World promises a pretty straightforward idea, right? Yeah, but don't bother asking any of the obvious questions like what does Chasey save the world from, or how does Chasey save the world, because they won't be answered. In fact, the title is a flat-out, balls-in-your-face lie. First of all, Chasey plays a woman named Denise. Okay, so shouldn't it be called Denise Saves the World? Yeah, well hang on, cowboy. Denise is a woman who visits a hotel that appears to be overrun by zombified locals who appear to be under some kind of mind control that can only be cured by good old-fashioned orgasm. Uh-huh, and? Well, that's it. Whenever Denise can bring one of these mind control zombies to orgasm, they revert back to normal, and then they merrily join her fucktastic cause. So this is clearly not a global crisis considering that it's all set in one little rinky-dink motel. The title really should be, Denise Saves a Random Motel by Fucking People. Well, no, because if the ending of the movie is taken into account, she doesn't even really succeed at doing that. Okay, screw the title. Vivid promised us a movie where Chasey Lane saves the world, and that's not what we're getting. So what do we get? Well, you're getting a typical 90s porn flick slathered with all the pointless narrative, cheesy acting, and thankfully some solid sex scenes. Aside from Chasey, you've got Jill Kelly as Denise's friend who elects not to go with her at the beginning of the movie, only to show up halfway through anyway. There's Missy as Lisa the slutty chambermaid, and hey look, it's Tom Byron, who seems to be the only one to remind us that it's 1996. Remember that terrifying mullet he had in The Chameleon? Well now he looks oh so 90s by comparison. Then there's this dude who has the unenviable task to try and deliver most of the film's exposition. It's our world. Aliens want to mess up a planet, let them mess up their own. Besides, we can ruin this one without help from outside. I'm gonna go off and look for strays. See if they're possessed. If they are, I'll do my best to exercise them. I don't mind putting my body on line for Mother Earth. No wimp. Heck, I got nine bowling trophies. Pressure don't pays me none. Wait, what? I thought we were dealing with zombies here. Now he's talking about aliens, possession, exorcism, something about Mother Earth, and bowling? Okay. Needless to say, they never really do explain what exactly these creatures are supposed to be. There is a consistent theme, however, of them being attracted to electrical devices and heat sources. Take this scene, for example, where we have two zombies hooked up to a propane tank via straws. Are they drinking the propane? It's a fucking propane milkshake. I don't think they serve those at Dairy Queen. Maybe it's a San Fernando Valley thing. I'm not sure. Later on, we have a scene where Jill Kelly and Chasey Lane are trying to seduce this one zombie who's obsessed with that same goddamn propane space heater again. Look at this shit. At first, he apparently thinks it's a shower. Then he decides he wants to fuck it. Then he decides to fuck Chasey instead. Is there a point to all of this? Well, of course not. Trying to figure out the plot of this sucker is going to give me a mammoth brain malfunction. Okay, so maybe Chasey didn't save the world. But the packaging is really nice. And look at this. It says here... Winner 1997 AVN Award. It was for best packaging. It didn't win anything else, believe me. I looked up and down the nominees list and the winners list, and in fact, I don't even think it was nominated for anything else. But who gives a stick about the awards anyway? Chasey Saves the World is a testament to one thing. If you worked in porno in the 1990s, you probably had a really silly stage name, like Buster Gonad. Yeah, uh, Buster Gonad was the sound designer on this movie, and apparently he didn't make it all the way through to production because at the end credits, it claims that the sound was done by Buster Cherry. So maybe Buster Gonad got fired halfway through? I, I don't know. 
The main thing here is that Chasey Saves the World is just another one of those lost little treasures from the 90s. And yes, I call it a treasure for no other reason than it's just one of those things we don't really get anymore. It's not high art by any means, but at least it's got glitzy packaging and Chasey Lane, so if you're into that sort of thing, check this sucker out.